Hi, Mr. T here, and welcome to the second video on the 2016 mechanics paper for NCA. Uh, this is the second question from the paper, and the second question from the paper starts with uh, was all about rotational um, motion. Okay, so first we have two cylinders rolling down a ramp or a slope. We need to state the energy change it takes plate as the energy as the cylinders go down the slope. I assume that there is negligible heat and sound. Well, that means that look, no energy is lost as heat and sound. There's no friction. So we know at the start that uh, we start with uh, gravitational potential energy. So at the start, we have EP, okay, potential energy. This is from uh, gravitational potential energy. Um, and this is converted to EK. Two types of EK here, rotational kinetic energy and linear kinetic energy. Because it's going to be moving uh, uh, translational motion or linear. It's going to go long ways compared to the to the slope, it's also going to turn compared to the slope, right? So it's going to have both linear and rotational kinetic energy. Okay, so um, now we look closer at the cylinders, we see one is solid and one is hollow. So I'm automatically thinking, you know, they're going to ask me something about inertia here, because why else would they do that? And the next question says, a hollow cylinder has a radius of 0.05, it rolls down the slope and reaches a speed of 0.250 meters per second. The rotational inertia of the hollow cylinder is 0 0.140 kilogram meters squared. Calculate the rotational kinetic energy. Okay, so uh, I look at my equations. I find that the kinetic energy rotational equals um, half uh, mv half inertia mega squared. Okay, so I need to find out what omega is here. So if I want to find out that, um, the first thing I'm going to have to do is know um, how fast that it's turning. Well, that's where we use this, the radius, and this, V. Okay, so we're going to use uh, omega equals V over radius. Pretty straightforward. So I'm going at 250 meters per second over 0 0.058 meters. And that gives me an angular uh, velocity of 0 0.431 um, radians second, negative one. Yeah. So that we needed that to solve the next uh, this equation here. We're going to take this and put it into there. Yep. So now we've got ek rotational equals half uh, the inertia one four zero kgm squared times omega squared. Yep. And that answer is going to give us 1.30 joules. Notice here, I've put this to two significant figures. And the reason I put it to two significant figures is because uh, here, our smallest value, uh, sorry, our smallest number of significant figures is from this value, two. So our answer must go to two. Okay, let's go look at the next question. This is question C. The hollow cylinder starts from rest and has an angular acceleration of one point. Okay, well, let's just highlight that. Angular alpha acceleration. Calculate the time taken for first full rotation. Okay, again, just like year 12, starts from rest means that it is not rotating at the start. So um, the WI is going to equal zero. Oh, sorry, not that. Let's do that. It's going to equal zero meters per second. 
we want to calculate the time. The equation I'm going to choose here is one that has wi, it has uh, theta, and we're going to go for this equation here. Now, just bear with me here. So this is theta equals um, wit plus half alpha t squared. Okay, so here's the assumption we make here. We've said that wi, uh, sorry, omega initial equals zero. So that means that this whole part of this equation is zero, because zero times whatever time equals zero. So now we've got theta equals half alpha times t squared. Uh, move the half to the other side, we get um, t squared equals, and we're moving the alpha over there as well, so we get theta divided by half alpha, and t equals the square root of theta divided by half alpha. Um, one thing we need to do is find out uh, what theta is. Okay, so what have they told us about theta? Oh, one full rotation, the first rotation. Now, how many radians are there in one rotation? There's two pi radians. Okay, um, theta equals, I'll put that here, two pi rads. Yep, so I now put this into my value. I get uh, the square root of two pi radians divided by a half, 0.5, and the acceleration, 1. 0.72 radian second negative 2. Remember at the bottom they are in parentheses and brackets and the answer we get for this equals 2.70 seconds. There we go. Okay that's the answer. The last bit here, uh, the last bit is the solid, the solid and the hollow cylinders are both released at the same time. Explain why the solid cylinder reaches the bottom of the slope first. Okay, so what's the essential difference between the hollow and the solid cylinders? And this is um, the solid cylinder has its mass closer to the center, its mass distributed closer to the center, so I is smaller than the hollow one because remember I is proportional. To R squared. So uh, if our mass is further away from the center, a larger radius, we get a bigger I. So we're going to say the solid cylinder, our cylinder has um, a smaller I as its mass. is distributed closer to the center. Now, here's, a, here's another bit of information we've got to put down early on, and that's that um, the energy it has at the top, which is its potential energy, will equal the kinetic energy at the bottom, because it's used all of its potential potential energy to turn a kinetic energy. Now there are two kinetic energies it can it will have at the bottom. It will be rotating and it will be moving um, in a straight line as well. So it has both linear and rotational kinetic energy. Now it so happens that uh, the rotational kinetic energy, the size of that, is dependent on, so if we put this over here, ek rot equals um, half I omega squared. So we can say here, um, as uh, ek rot is proportional to the inertia. Okay, so if we have a smaller inertia, so if I is smaller. Then 
EK will be smaller. Okay, so since our, oh, excuse me here. I lost that. Since our kinetic energy has, um, because our inertia was smaller, our kinetic energy was smaller, that means that um, this solid cylinder has a smaller EK. Uh, sorry, when I said AK here, it's EK rot. So therefore, um, it will have, have a larger EK linear. Now, why is that, you say? It's because EK rot plus EK linear equal the potential energy at the start. If the rotational kinetic energy is less, then the linear kinetic energy must be larger. Now, we know that the EK linear equals half mv squared. So we know that the kinetic energy um, linear is proportional to V squared. And what that means here is if we if we make the kinetic energy bigger, then the velocity is bigger. So as the um, solid cylinder has a larger EK lin, it will have a, car a larger V, so it will reach the bottom of the ramp quicker. Okay. Um, yeah, that's pretty much uh, the answer for this. Uh, it will be quicker to reach the bottom. You could have also explained this using uh, torque and inertia and acceleration. Uh, so, um, but uh, this is not really the best way to do that. Okay, thank you for watching the video uh, and um, watch the other two videos, uh, one about question one and question three if you want to go over how to answer these.